Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah that if you have questions you email help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah and be patient. There's no rush. If this is an emergency then dial 911. Other than an emergency then alhamdulillah we make a request and with sabr and patience Allah inspire within us and answer and suggestions inshaAllah. What do we have for tonight inshaAllah? <coughs> Email Sayyidi, um, As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Saab, I'm from Kashmir. My parents passed away one after another in December 2019 and January 2020 respectively. In 2018 they performed Hajj, now we are just two siblings left. My question is, what should I do that their sins be forgiven and how can I make them enter paradise? How can I come to know whether they are fine? InshaAllah from the questions that come in then some of them that are worthy of uh, being answered online means that they're applicable to many people, it's not just a personal question. This one was one of those that our, our life is about service and how to reach Allah's ridha and satisfaction and that we won't benefit for ourselves, our family, our children and our loved ones. And that every amal if it's done for dunya has a limited good and you take the benefit of that good and we try in our lives to do the amal and the actions that have an eternal dress upon them. Means that everything in the way of Allah a brick for a masjid, uh, for center, for salawats, for book, for dawah, for knowledges, all of these actions that we do a khidmat and a service in Allah's way has an eternal reality within it. And we seek in our lives to do the amals best that have an eternal reality. That everything we do in that way it become like a jariyah, become an eternal fountain towards the souls of our loved ones. Means they don't sit there happy when we have new dunya items but as soon as we do something in the way of Allah with our money, with our time, with our efforts, with our ability it becomes eternal. And that's why the tariqah comes to inspire people towards a khidmat and service. That of what Allah gave to you of your abilities, of your rizq, your sustenance, your knowledges, your understanding, we want Ya Rabbi to achieve its eternal reality. So then Allah inspire within our heart then use it for akhirah, use it for the da'wah, use it for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad propagate that love. So anything that we do towards that eternity dresses their souls. No doubt that Allah inshaAllah be happy with us, Prophet be happy with us. If they're happy with us then no doubt that our parents and the, love, the souls of our loved ones to be dressed and blessed from that reality. And not only to be dressed and blessed by it but to be raised by it, means the actions towards the the realities of awliyaullah and haqiqat al-Muhammadiyyah is of the highest level of realities. And that can't even be understood in the way of the people of dunya. Means the propagation of that knowledge, the understanding of that knowledge to live a life accompanying that reality, it's taking us to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad it's not just like supporting something random far away and don't know if it's accepted or not by Allah But the taruqs and the way of reality that come and they propagate the haqqaiqs, what they call haqiqat al-Muhammadiyyah of the highest realities are the realities in relation to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So that has unimaginable benefit and blessings 
and no doubt it's a dress upon the souls, dress upon our, our souls, take away every type of difficulty, every type of badness, every type of protection comes through these actions. And then we said even the acquisition of this knowledge changes your soul. So when the salawat that they recite that, with your qalam you change the destiny of me, O oh my teacher, O oh my master, means that with the knowledges they teach it changes the reality of even the soul. And if the soul be dressed by those haqqaiqs, dressed by those haqqaiqs, Allah eventually change everything related to that soul. Because once the soul becomes of a noble reality even the rizq and the sustenance that has to dress it, bless it and feed it of the world of light and power, all of it becomes noble, all of it becomes an immense reality. So alhamdulillah that Allah inspire us to the turuqs that was the first sign. Then to support and to apply the knowledges of the turuq and that dresses the eternal soul of our loved ones, of ourselves and blesses our entire family and communities inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi, you, mm, can you please, do you mind expanding on the meanings behind your explanation of Prophet miracle of splitting the moon, the role of the great Siddiqs and the reunification of the Ummah in the end days? Ooh. Inshallah, we'll try to talk about that inshaAllah after the zikr, that, that requires a little bit more time inshaAllah. Okay Sayyidi, um, Sayyidi, what's the meaning behind a broken heart and why do people's hearts break sometimes? Shaykh, how can someone learn from a broken heart? InshaAllah, <clears throat> I think we've talked before on that which is, is soft, means that the skin in its normal form is very soft. That which tears creates a scar tissue, becomes very strong and very firm. One of the realities of the broken heart is that it creates a strength within insan. That becomes the reality of the scar tissue. That the, the fragile heart is fragile once it's broken in this way and in the direction of the love of Allah the heart is becoming actually more firm. The muscle, the reality, the, the practices, everything becomes more form, more firm. That becomes the reality of intihaam, the testing. Why Allah is testing? Because that when the person is broken down and every type of difficulty comes to them, the successful person in reality is the one who've been hit down a thousand times and they've gotten up a thousand times. The one whom is not successful in life and in realities is the one who's been hit down and stays down. And that's what Allah wounds from the believer is, get up. Every time a test comes it's not about succeeding because our life is about the struggle. Success is in Allah's hands but the struggle and the fight is with us. Allah's success is not something people can understand because they're trying to judge it by dunya success. What's successful to Allah when, when we want Allah's victory. So then tariqah comes and teach, don't think of the victory, just think about how well are you struggling in Allah's way. That every time some sort of a defeat, a difficulty, a test comes in life, if you were sincere about it the pain enters into the heart. And they get knocked down, they learn through their meditation, they cry and only the broken hearted enter the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because it becomes like a fire on their body. That when the body and the hawa, that's why we come against the nafs 
the dunya, the hawa and shaitan. There are four enemies that separate the soul, it's like quartered into four. That was from Sayyidina Ibrahim asking Allah how you raise the dead Ya Rabbi, let me to see how you raise the dead. And he says, you don't believe? He said, no I just want yaqeen, I want the certainty means I want its spiritual realities. It's not about a physical bird, the bird is the soul. And Allah said, split this bird onto four mountain tops but call it back and you'll see that it comes together as one. From the reality of the soul Allah was teaching Sayyidina Ibrahim the father of faith. The soul of people in dunya is blocked. One from the dunya the material desires of that person. Shaitan increases their material desire now like a, a quarter of that soul is been cut off from its reality. Increases the hawa, the seeking of pleasure, comfortable bed, comfortable couch, comfortable cushions, comfortable everything. The nafs giving as much as you can to the nafs. And then shaitan, their shaitan then becomes powerful when they gave to those three enemies, the shaitan became very powerful. So then the turuqs come to teach that bring your dunya desire down, take a life in which your eyes look to your feet. And the expression from the eyes look to your feet is that a man complained so much about him. His shoes, that was his dunya, so much about he doesn't have the latest fashion, he doesn't have what other people don't have, he doesn't have all the things that people have. And his shaykh told him that if you take a path in which your eyes look to your feet, look to your shoes, you'll eventually notice someone who has no feet. So that which you're concerned about there's always someone in more difficulty and it could get worse for you if you don't appreciate Allah Means nazar ba qadam is an immense reality. These are 11 principles of Naqshbandiya, go to Nur Muhammad our website and, and understand what Mawlana Shah Naqshban brought. The 11 principles of Naqshbandiya, it's a school of immense realities, the vision of the eyes upon the feet have an immense reality with your desire and your dunya of where your feet are taking you. And when I look to my feet, my material desires, I want so many things and I don't have what these people have. Especially with Instagram everybody gets to see what everybody has, most of it is lies. They go rent something and take photos of it as if they have it, it's not even theirs. And they found out all these people are posting like they own all these things and found out these are all rented. Even they make shows of somebody living in a house they found out they don't even really live in that house. The show put them in the house and put them in that whole circumstance. It's a dajjal time of deceit. So when you're looking at your feet complaining about your shoes the shaykh says, no think about the one now who has no feet. And look how difficult his life is with no feet and you're thinking about shoes. Then it became gratefulness to be grateful to Ya Rabbi, thank you, thank you for my condition. Even my health is bad it could be worse. Thank you for the condition I'm in Ya Rabbi, don't take my health away, my rizq away, don't take away my faith but grant me more from it. you the one whom give and never take away Ya Rabbi, what you gave you're not like dunya people that you take away. If you granted us rizq Ya Rabbi grant us more. If you granted us health Ya Rabbi grant us more, don't take our health away. If you granted us knowledges Ya Rabbi, ilm al mazid grant us more Ya Rabbi and don't take away from your ni'mat. So then we live a life of thankfulness and that becomes then the teaching on how to bring dunya down. Look down, don't look up, don't look to wealthy people saying, why I can't be like them. Look to the poor, look to those whom have less and, and difficulty and you'll be very thankful where you are. For if not Allah can take you down even lower into, into the oceans of difficulty and despair. 
We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with an understanding and the depth of tariqah knowledges that come to like a najat for humanity inshaAllah. We have a few more minutes inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi can you please speak a little bit about Imam Mahdi as some people are claiming to be Mahdi? Yeah. That gohar is nothing to do with Sayyidina Mahdi This is a deceitful dajjali type of teaching and there are many dajjal. Dajjal means deceit. Anytime you wait for the big liar you've entered into the world of lies because the big liar is coming to tell the ultimately crazy big lies that's called dajjal. All the minor dajjals until we get to that time are the people of deceit and lies. They say their face is on the moon, they say that they're Sayyidina Mahdi salam and they're, they're… what are they waiting for? They say there's somebody somewhere in a cave, he's waiting, they send down kebabs, they send out a, a du'a of what they want, this is all rubbish. The immensity of the power of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam's zuhoor and just his spiritual presence is not something people can take, not something people can tolerate. The level of purity is such that if they couldn't go into the presence when Sayyidina Musa Salam asked for the tablets, when asked for a message from Allah they brought tablets down the commandments. When he got angry and threw the commandment they put it into a box of the covenant. They couldn't enter the presence of those tablets because of their, they weren't in a position of holiness enough to enter into that presence. And that was uh, pieces of stone. What do you imagine for the heart? of the most guided Muhammadan representative that his zuhud will be changing the whole of dunya. What level of purity Allah is going to require? And that's why we said if they had eyes to see and ears to hear they would have seen what Allah is preparing for that zuhud. How much Allah is showing a ihtiram and respect for Sayyidina Muhammad that before that light starts to enter and walk upon this earth, he put the whole of dunya into seclusion. Get in to your homes, those whom are going to be dressed by lights, go into your homes you'll be dressed by light. Those whom have no light go into your home and realize you're going to come out with absolutely no light so that it become black and white and no gray. And from azimat of Allah He sends an unseen enemy that the whole world is trembling from. Ships have stopped, oil have stopped, economies have stopped, the pilgrimages of the, their cities have stopped. Everybody has a fear and nobody has seen anything. And you want to see the might of Allah you, you think you can say, you represent that might? It's immense, immense power is coming upon this earth and Allah is showing immense miraculous realities upon this earth right now. He woke up in the morning and an entire city was gone and they said it was an accident. That was no accident what you saw, something has already started. We said that when they called the azan of the masjid in Turkey, Ayah Sophia, that was an azan from heaven. That was a, a calling that something is starting upon this earth, wake up cities will be gone. It's not somebody calling himself that then his face is on the moon, his face is nowhere. Sayyidina Mahdi Salam's reality is immense, immense and requires an immense amount of love within the servant's heart, immense amounts of trainings to connect with the light, connect with the beauty, connect with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that that light and fires begin to dress the servant. 
and dress from the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi and that his knowledges and realities to be emanating upon this earth. That's we said that dawah is the biggest fight right now for the hearts and minds of the souls that are being held captive, the souls whom Allah has destined for them to hear that reality and destined for them to be from the reality of the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi If they're not destined for that they don't hear this and this light is not having anything to do with them. So it means that the spiritual attack is the most important right now. The knowledges that are coming out that defeat the satanic empire, bring down the satanic grip upon the soul and bring down that satanic energy that's upon the nafs of those whom Allah want them to be in oceans of salvations. Those whom not written from that reality they pass that channel like they didn't even see it. They came to the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad and they saw a spider web. We're now entering towards the month of Zulhaj and the Hijrah. They came looking for Prophet They came directly to the door of the cave of where Prophet is inside and they were distracted by a spider web. That's Ankabut, that's Surah 29 that has a reality of Lam Alif that 29 and they couldn't see. So it means they'll come, they'll come across these realities and they don't see it and they click to the next channel, they click to the next talk, they, they don't pass by those books. It's not meant for them but those whom Allah it meant for then that light enter into their hearts, that light enters into their eyes, to their soul, to their being. And as a result of those lights they become the people whom are waiting for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi because these are from the heavenly stations of Sayyidina Mahdi These knowledges are not coming out from just any location, they have to come Alim al-Qadir that Allah sifat of alim ancient knowledges that carry a flag of al-alim and with that flag is another flag of Al-Qadr that Allah's oceans of power must be dressing so that knowledge and that power is moving out upon the servant and heavenly dragons that are guarding that reality to reach and to propagate upon this earth inshaAllah. We pray that Allah's rida and satisfaction to be upon us, mm-hmm. Sayyidina Muhammad's rida and satisfaction to be upon us, Sayyidina Mahdi Ridha and satisfaction to be upon us and awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard to be upon us, mm-hmm. Ahlul Bayt and Nabi wasallam's ridha and satisfaction to be upon us and Ashab al-Kareem, Ashab al-Kareem that Allah's Prophet's beloved companions, their nazar and their gaze to be upon us, their mm-hmm. support and their love to be upon us and mm-hmm. that Allah dress us from Sayyidina Uthman Jami al-Qur'an and Majeed's mm-hmm. secret in which his beloved and blessed soul brought the realities of Holy Qur'an together into a kitab, mushaf and then coded it with all its codings which is immense, immense realities in each of those codings. We pray that Allah dress us Sayyidina Uthman be happy with us and read upon us and to dress us from those lights and bless us from those lights inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.